No, you tie. They're going to watch oh, you. Oh, then they... Okay. Then they're all going to sit down. And, and I can walk around and... Yes. Explain what you're doing. Okay. Size, material, thread, you name it, everything. Um, the first thing I'd like you all to do when you start tying is create the wing for this fly because it needs either fly tires, head cement, or I used, this is my daughter's clear nail polish. I didn't bring any with me. Um, and the way we achieve this is, I'll do one quickly. Okay, a small partridge hackle. And strip this sucker, I guess, to about 13 millimeters, 12 millimeters. Is that being is that being too fussy? Buy anything you want to show, put it in front of the hook. Yeah. Okay, that's where it's. All right, I've stripped it down to about 12 millimeters that way. And this this dries very quickly because. Paint, put some varnish on the feather and just draw it through your fingers and it should all stick together like that. You want two of these because you then stick two of them together but you see where the two uh, stems of the feathers are? They're slightly separated. You don't want them on top of each other, you want them like slightly, slightly apart. And that, when you tie it down on the front of the hook, it's going to do that over the hook. So let's put the body on. Well, let's get some tying silk first. Um, I've used a, a Regal Vice for years. I don't know how long. But about two years ago, I was introduced to the Norvice. And um, this thing is amazing. I cannot say enough good things about um, Norman is the guy that invented it, but he's even got a retractable uh, sprung load bobbin. I, th I don't know of any other one in the world, but you'll see the, the, the benefits of this in a minute. So here we go, let's just cut that off. Okay, it doesn't really matter about the body material, um, except the the material itself, poly yarn, for floatability. Um, and forgive me, a lot of you guys might know this, but um, you can create an instant, perfectly segmented fur body if you make a fur rope. So you take a small piece of poly yarn and you roll it in your hand like this. Stick that under the hook shank, and I don't know if I'm going to, with this band-aid, this plaster on my finger, I don't know if this is going to work. No, it's not. I'm going to have to take this off. This finger is ugly, guys. I'm sorry. I apologize. The whole thing got waxed with a, not a hammer, a golf bag, believe it or not. Golf bag. A golf bag. This one of the studs on the bottom, it's full of clubs. Wow. Oh. Yeah, and that was about two months ago. And it's yeah. just grown out. Anyway, here's the fur rope. You've got to hold that in position here and twist it onto the onto the yarn. You see what's happened there? And now watch as I turn that forwards, not backwards. You get a, a segmented body. Too much fur. We're going to have to take some of that off. And, you know, again, forgive me if you sell fly tie materials and stuff. I don't want to upset the apple cart, but that's the best pair of fly tie and scissors I've ever had in my life. <laughs> because I can get my bloody fingers in it. Um, you get them in... Uh, Anywhere where women buy wool and cloth and stuff, <laughs> there are, uh, yeah, Fisco, awesome fly tie and scissors, because you can see, look at those points, 
and right at the very, very tip, they cut perfectly. I love them. Okay, the wing. We have stuck. What is the name of this one? A brown caddis, brown dry, brown dry caddis. Yeah, um, and you can change the wing materials. Obviously, different colours like cinnamon. You can get some cinnamon feathers for a cinnamon caddis. Um, but here you go, those two feathers stuck together with your cement and you're going to tie on top of the actual feather, not on the stalks. And I think you can see what's happened. It's made an instant tent. In fact, I don't even have to have the hook down there, I can bring it out here. Can you all see that? See, I've got an instant tent there. Wind it back a bit. I often pull these back, tie them down again, and then the only way they're going to come off the hook is if they snap off. I just split the wing with my scissors, but not to worry because a bit of varnish is going to make it all better again. The antenna, um, on these Cree, uh, Cree capes and chinchilla capes, if you, if you palm through them, you'll find bum, what I call bum feathers. It's like feathers that haven't got any decent markings on them. And that's the ones I pull out. You see there's one there. That's no good for fly tying because of the color. So that's the one I'd pull out and strip for the antenna of the fly to save waste in the hackle. And I do have some prepared. Two antenna. And they've got, you know, a nice, like, barred marking on them. Tie those in right there. The eyes have to come on next, and I guess you want me to burn some, don't you? Why not? Believe it or not, these still come from the factory. We had a permanently employed eye burner. She sat all day, every day, burning eyes. And I've got like a hundred packets like this. Different sizes. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Look, um, I can't even show you on the camera, I don't think. But there's the eyes. Can you see that? And now you're going to want me to burn some, aren't you? No, no, no. No? Good. Okay. Onward. onward. <laughs> uh, figure of eights over these eyes. Get rid of the camel. Come back to where you tied the wing in. It's really not a difficult fly to tie. Um, and I've got, I haven't got any prepared feathers, so let's just pick one. That's all on this one. Out of this one. What is the look size then? A 12, I think, isn't it? 10. I'm sorry, 10. And again, the hackle size isn't really that important because we're going to whack half of it off with a pair of scissors when, when I finish. This fly does not have to sit on the water like a dry, regular traditional dry fly. We want it to sit flat on the water. I like to trim this stem off before I wind that hackle because it's more difficult to get the scissors in there when I'm finished. I'm winding the silk back to where the hackle starts because I like to wind the silk through my hackles for strength. About four turns. I'm sorry? Yeah, I, I wound the hackle forward 
and I had the silk back as well, and I wound, wound the silk forward through the hackle. Put it in the same direction? Yeah. And don't worry about cutting off hackles underneath the hook, because I'll show you what happens now, once I get this whip finished. No, it looks really ugly, doesn't it? If I let go of that thread, it's going to whoosh back on the spool because of the spring. So that's one of the reasons Norm came up with this post. I just hang it on the post. Is there any gap, Barry? I'm sorry? Is there any gap? Um, you don't want to know. <laughs> in in Maritzburg, when I left, um, man, you want me to waffle on for another two hours? <laughs> no, I was, I was a 10. And I actually work on a golf course in America now. Yeah, as a as a marshal, starter, whatever they were, part time, but I'm I guess I'm a 16 because I only took up golf again two two years ago. I've been 23 years without golf. Um, okay, I'm going to whack off all the hackles here. Wham, gone because we want it to sit down on the surface fill. And the antenna, about there, you can put them apart. I'm getting old. And I don't know if you guys can see that. And it really, you know, if you're fishing a caddis hatch, you, you would think, oh, that's fish an emerger, because an emerging caddis. But if they're, if they're feeding on the, on the emerging caddis flies, they're going to kill this. They're going to just eat this thing up. Um, no difference. I've got a bit of alcohol stem still on that one. Just cut that off a little bit shorter. There you go. That's it, guys. And if anybody wants to not have to <laughs> bugger around with burning eyes, come and help yourself. Or I'll walk around. <laughs> Um, yeah, many years ago, because for 23 years, um, apart from, you know, like once a year or once every two years when I go trout fishing, I never go trout fishing. I'm saltwater fiber. Thanks, you.